Hello, my name is Mark Nicholson and I'm going to be talking to you uh, today about some new lens design features in ZMAX 12. As you probably know, if you've been doing lens design for any length of time, ZMAX has used Gaussian quadrature for a very long time uh, to compute things like RMS spot size, RMS wavefront error in lens systems. And it's, it's been a, a method we've used for a very, very long time. At the last IODC conference, the International Optical Design Conference, Brian Bauman and Hong Zhao of Lawrence Livermore showed some new methods for extending Gaussian quadrature into areas that hadn't been used before. And this was typically uh, in the choice of the wavelength range of a lens and in uh, lenses which have obscured pupils. And we've added this into ZMAX 12 now, so you can access this capability very, very easily. The methods are fully written up in uh, Brian and Hong's papers from IODC, but as, far, as you'll see, as far, from the, as, far as the uh, ZMAX user interface is concerned, it's actually very, very easy to access, very easy to use as, as things in ZMAX normally are. In this uh, uh, particular case, uh, I'm going to start off looking at wavefront uh, or wavelet sorry I beg your pardon I'm going to start off looking at wavelength um, uh, uh, optimization in a fairly standard double gauss lens now this lens is based on the standard double gauss that we've used as a sample for for many years and all I've done is basically set it to have a, a specific f number uh, I've given it a constraint on distortion and on back focal length uh, and I've built a merit function for RMS spot size uh, and optimized over three wavelengths just as I normally uh, would. So here's our first example and it's a simple imaging system, it's a double gauss type of lens. Um, it's based on the, 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 the sample double gauss lens that we've been distributing with ZMAX for a long time and all I've done is I've optimized it uh, already using the traditional methods, uh, no surprises here at all. I have a center thickness greater than operand to provide control over this back focal distance here. I have a distortion maximum uh, operand to control the distortion. And then I simply have a default RMS spot size uh, uh, merit function using four rings and six arms. And because it's using four rings, this gives me control of all aberrations up to R to the uh, seventh, so I can control higher order spherical if I want, and uh, or at least if it's present. Uh, and I can I've also put in some reasonable air and glass thickness boundaries, and I've optimized this lens, and it has given me this level of performance. Looking at it as spot size, you can see that what I have here is uh, the colours of the lines represent the uh, the field points and we're scanning the spot size over wavelength. And you can see that you know, the red is up here at about nine and a half microns and so on. The diffraction limits right down here. So this is reasonable, not great performance, um, but it's, you know, it's, it's a reasonable level of performance. So how can I improve that easily? Well, if I go to the wavelength dialog box, you can see that what I have here are the three wavelengths of F, D, and C all with equal weights. And that's how we've been designing this type of lens for, you know, for, for a long time. But instead of just selecting these wavelengths using this, this drop-down list here, as we've used you know, many times before, I can now use this Gaussian quadrature button here. And all I need to do is tell ZMAX how many wavelength steps to use. A Gaussian quadrature requires an even number of wavelengths. Uh, so I'm going to use four. And it's going to pick up the minimum and maximum values that I've already specified here. And if I just press the Gaussian quadrature button, you'll see that it has now added in two extra intermediate wavelengths. I've got the same minimum and maximum wavelengths. I've got two new intermediate wavelengths. And I've got some weights calculated like so. And Gaussian quadrature works on the basis of doing a fit to a polynomial. Uh, so the underlying polynomial that we use for dispersion here is the Selmayr polynomial. So as long as the glasses are, are well described, their dispersion is well described by a Selmayr polynomial, uh, this should be a better way of choosing the wavelengths. 
So all I need to do is click OK to accept those new wavelengths. And then I just go back to the uh, default merit function tool. And all I'm going to do is rebuild it. So it's exactly the same spot radius, centroid, rings, four and six, nothing, no other changes. I'm just going to rebuild it so that it takes account of the new uh, wavelengths and their, their weights. And if I go to the optimizer here, you can see this is, this is the previously optimized value. If I just hit automatic on this, you can see that that merit function drops down really quickly. And it will stop in just a second. There we go. And if I go back to my RMS wave, uh, uh, wavelength plot and I double click this to update it, you can see that we're reducing the, the RMS spot size by about a micron, possibly more, uh, across the whole uh, wavelength range at uh, each uh, field point. It made most difference in the red in this case, but it made big differences in the, the blue and the, 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 the green as well. So overall, the uh, RMS spot size for this uh, lens over the same wavelength range has improved simply because I changed how I chose my intermediate wavelengths and the weights that I applied to those intermediate wavelengths. And it really is as simple as that. I've got no extra tricks up my sleeve. I'm not, use, I'm not making anything uh, aspheric. I'm not adding any, any new glasses. I'm not doing anything other than just a better choice of the intermediate wavelengths and their weights. And that just gives me better performance right off the bat. Moving on from that example, let's have a look at the annular pupil case. And both of these sample files that I'm using are actually provided in the, the ZMAX 12 dis, uh, distribution. So you can uh, look at these in your own time as well. And again, I have a very, very simple system here. I just have a standard Cassegrain type telescope. Again, no real surprises. It's got a corrector lens, but no real surprises on it. And through the magic of sequential ray tracing, I'm ignoring any obscuration caused by this aperture here. So if I just trace a bunch more rays, oops. You can see that all these rays are just getting straight through the, the, the system. If I look at the, uh, the wavefront map here, this wavefront map is traced on a sampling of 256 by 256 uh, rays. We're tracing that huge grid of rays through the system, and we're computing the RMS of the uh, wavefront to be uh, 0 0.0022 waves. And here, in the merit function, I'm tracing just four rays using the RMS wavefront relative to the centroid uh, default merit function. And you can see I'm getting exactly the, uh, the, the, the same number. We actually show it to higher precision in the merit function than we do here in the grid, but it's the same uh, number. So this is you know, 0.0022 waves, and, and so is this. So what happens now if I add an obscuration? Well, if I go to surface number two and I just add an obscuration of 25 millimeters, that obscures the central one third of the pupil. And as a result of that central one third of the pupil being obscured, the RMS has varied. I now have a different RMS uh, uh, wavefront error. It's now 0.0018 of a wave. However, the merit function here still shows the previous 0.0022 of a wave because up until now, Gaussian quadrature has not accounted for obscured pupils like this. So all I need to do is go back to my default merit function tool and I just need to reconfigure this to be the same way as it was previously. That's, that's it. And I now set the obscuration ratio to be 0 0.333 because I'm obscuring the central third of the pupil, so the obscuration is a, a, is a third. And if I click on OK now, you'll see that I'm getting 0 0.0018 waves again, which agrees with the, the wavefront function here. So 
If I also look here, you'll see that I'm chasing different rays. They are all within the unobscured region and they have different weights so that they sum up to give me uh, to very high accuracy the RMS wavefront error over the obscured region. And this really demonstrates the big benefits of Gaussian quadrature because here I am with just four rays getting exactly the same results as I got with a grid of 256 by 256 rays. So you can see how much faster that's going to be for optimizing a lens compared to using the grid methods that you've had to use in the past when you've had systems with obscured pupils. So in summary, these new capabilities in ZMAX 12 which are included in SE, EE, and the new flagship IE uh, levels of ZMAX are really good news for anybody doing classic lens design of imaging systems that have to work over a wavelength range or have some kind of obscured pupil. As you've seen, they don't require you to trace more rays or add more variables or make the design more complex. They just make a better choice of the rays that you're using. And as a result, they give you better designs uh, without any extra effort.